NATO forces present in Ukraine is not unthinkable, Polish foreign minister. Foreign Minister Radislav Sikorski didn't exclude the potential presence of NATO troops in Ukraine. The comments came after French President Emmanuel Macron recently said that sending Western troops to Ukraine cannot be ruled out in the future. The US and many European allies have distanced themselves from Macron's statement. The presence of NATO forces in Ukraine is not unthinkable, Sikorski noted, saying he had appreciated Macron's initiative because it is about Russian President Vladimir Putin being afraid, not us being afraid of Putin. The Polish minister added, Sikorsky said Ukraine's allies had had to return to the original role of NATO, calling Russia a country that cannot live in peace with its neighbors and share their values despite the West's repeated encouragement. French Defence Minister Sébastien Lecornu said that while the deployment of combat troops was not currently being discussed, there was the possibility that Paris would send military personnel to Ukraine to train Ukrainian troops or participate in mine-clearing operations. Discussions about NATO boots on the ground in Ukraine need to end because nobody actually wants that to happen. German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius said. Pistorius argued that what the West needs to do instead is ramp up the delivery of ammunition and equipment to the Ukrainian military. Earlier, Canadian Defence Minister Bill Blair also said Ottawa was ready to send a limited number of military personnel to Ukraine, but in a clear non-combat role. During a two-hour State of the Nation address, Russian President Vladimir Putin threatened tragic consequences if NATO troops were sent to Ukraine, claiming the West's support for Kyiv risks a conflict using nuclear weapons. Russia has repeatedly warned the US and its allies that deliveries of weapons to Ukraine will not prevent Moscow from achieving the goals of its military operation and will only serve to prolong the fighting and increase the risk of a direct confrontation with NATO. Russia has no more red lines for France after Macron's announcement. Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev has warned that Russia will also act without restraint toward France after French President Emmanuel Macron refused to honor any red lines when it comes to supporting Ukraine. The French president said that there should be no restrictions on support for Ukraine, report French outlets Le Monde. He made the comments during a meeting with the leaders of France's political parties. According to Marine Tondelier, the leader of France's Europe Ecology, the Greens Party, Macron stated that Vladimir Putin has no limits and that the limits Ukraine's allies set for themselves give Russia an advantage. We must show that we don't have any limits either. Tondelier quotes Macron as saying, the leader of the French Communist Party, Fabien Roussel, and the leader of the national rally, Jordan Bardella, said that Macron's words imply there are no more red lines in terms of France's support for Ukraine. Whether Macron himself said there are no more red lines is unclear. Nevertheless, it was precisely these words, citing Le Monde, that Russian Security Council Chairman Dmitry Medvedev took to X to comment on then. That means Russia has no more red lines left for France. He concluded his post with a phrase from Roman law, in hostem omina licita, which translates to, against the enemy, everything is permitted. Earlier this week, Macron walked back on comments he made a week earlier that were widely interpreted to mean he supported sending NATO soldiers into Ukraine to fight against Russia. Nothing should be excluded, the French president said, following a gathering of Ukraine's backers in Paris on February the 26th. We will do anything we can to prevent Russia from winning this war. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said Western troops becoming involved in the war would result in the inevitability of a direct confrontation. In this case, it's not going to be about probability, but inevitability. That's how we assess it, Peskov said. Putin ally suggests nuclear strikes on France, Germany and US. An ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin has suggested launching nuclear strikes on three members of the NATO military alliance, France, Germany and the United States, according to Newsweek. State TV host Vladimir Solovyov, one of the most prominent figures in Kremlin-backed media, floated the idea on his show Evening with Vladimir Solovyov. 
The Daily Beast's Julia Davis shared an excerpt of the broadcast on Friday on X. Pundits on Vladimir Solovyov's show pontificated which Western cities should be the first to be targeted with nuclear strikes. Some of their top choices, Paris, Marseille, Lyon, Hamburg, Munich or Garmitsch, Partenkirchen and the United States in general, wrote Davis. Solovyov began by railing against France shortly after French President Emmanuel Macron said there are no limits to Paris's support for Kiev. The goal of France is not just getting free resources from the territory of Russia, but the destruction of Russia, the final solution of the Russian question, he said. Why do I think that we should carry out a strike against the West? Because I can see right through them. They say Russia can't tell us how to help Ukraine. It's not for you to dictate how Russia can respond. Another guest on the show, Andrei Sidorov, Deputy Dean of World Politics at the Moscow State University, told Solovyov that the issue is not whether or not to use nuclear weapons. The issue is against whom to use them. You often talk about France or Great Britain, said Sidorov. Solovyov responded, that's right, France, Germany, Poland, Great Britain. Solovyov said he was undecided on where exactly Russia should attack with nuclear weapons. I just can't decide. Paris or Marseille? What should we destroy in Germany for their Taurus? Maybe Munich? Maybe we should have an audience vote. See which cities are they willing to spare, said Solovyov. The Putin ally added, The level of humanity's madness has reached its limits. The West won't stop at anything. We should harshly fight against it with all the forces and means at our disposal.